Hi, welcome to another video in the AS A level accounting series. In the previous video, I gave you an introduction to the managerial accounting. We studied some costing terms. In this video, I will be starting with the absorption costing. I will be giving you an introduction to absorption costing. And in the next video, we will be looking at the details of absorption costing, the absorption of overheads basically. So in this video, we will be studying the in, uh, basics of absorption costing, how to do costing for a single product, meaning when a business is producing a single product, how does it calculate the cost of that product and costing of multiple products, meaning when the business produces more than one product, how does it arrive at the cost of each of the products that it produces. Before going ahead, let me tell you about the online course that you can enroll for. So using these videos, you can understand the concept. Uh, after that, if you want to practice more questions, if you want, if you're interested in, you know, studying the subject in detail with me, you can enroll for the course. I will be putting up the link to the courses in the description box below. You can subscribe for the free preview. There are some lessons already uploaded and uh, if you like, if you think that the course is for you and if you think it fits in your budget, you can pay and continue with the course. So let's go ahead. What is absorption costing? Absorption costing is a method of costing wherein the cost of the product is calculated by including all the variable and fixed production cost in the uh, calculation. In contrast, in the previous video also we saw that there is another way of costing is the marginal costing where only the variable production cost is you know considered in calculation of the cost of the product. Basically in absorption costing the variable and fixed cost are treated as product cost they are considered in cal valuation of the inventory whereas in marginal costing only the variable production costs are treated as product cost meaning they are considered in calculation of inventory or uh, value of inventory while the fixed production cost in marginal costing are treated as period cost. They are treated as cost for a period and not, you know, attached to the product. Details about marginal costing, obviously we will study in the later videos. So the cost of inventory includes all the direct and indirect cost of production. So if you remember from IGCSE accounting while preparing the manufacturing account, you had initially the prime cost, which was the total of your direct material labor and other expenses, all the direct cost. And on the other side, you had the uh, indirect cost, where basically the indirect material, indirect labor and all other indirect costs. So in absorption costing, all these costs, the direct and the indirect cost related to production are considered as cost of inventory and are taken into account when finding the value of inventory. Basically, this chapter is everything about finding out the cost of your product. So the next question arises, why do we need to calculate the cost of the product? There are many reasons. Now, some of the, these reasons could be determining the selling price per unit of the product. When the customer comes and asks you for the selling price of your product, you first need to know the cost of the product over the cost you will load your profit margin and you will then give a selling price to the customer. Let's say you have fixed selling prices in your business. So the selling prices and the cost that you arrive at using the absorption costing method that can be used to arrive at the profit per unit, the profit that you make per unit sold in your business. You can also use the cost that you arrive at and compare it with the cost of other competitors products or other products in the market. And you can then decide that, okay, we have better control over costs. We are doing fine or our costs are really high. We might have to control our costs so that our unit cost reduces and we can improve our profit or we can give a better selling price to our customers. So there can be various reasons for which you might need to calculate the unit cost of your product. So let's say we have a business that produces just a single product, a furniture manufacturer who estimates to produce 500 tables of a single type. He estimates that the raw material cost for the table would be $20,000. And since he's producing 500 tables, so the unit cost of each table as far as the raw materials are concerned comes to $40.40. 40. 
So 20,000 divided by 500 tables, dollars 40 per table as far as raw material is concerned. So that's how we get 40 here. Same way they estimate that the direct labor cost would be $15,000. So divided by 500, we get $30 per table. Prime cost, which is the total of direct cost, total cost is 35,000, whereas per table cost is $70. To that, we will add our indirect cost, indirect material, labor, and all other indirect costs. So the business estimates a total overheads of 30,000. This when divided by 500 tables, we get $60 per table. Then we can easily arrive at the unit cost of production, which is the total of prime cost and the overhead cost per unit. So 70 plus 60 gives us $130 per table. This is very useful for the business. I told you the purpose is in the previous slide to decide on the selling price or to cal calculate the profit per unit. So when a business is producing a single product, calculation of unit cost is not a problem at all. The problem arises when a business is producing multiple products. Uh, the higher the number of products being produced, the more complex it becomes to arrive at the unit cost of each product. So we have an example here where the furniture manufacturer estimates to produce 500 tables and 2000 chairs and the information is given. So for 500 tables, raw material and raw material cost and direct labor cost have been given, which is same as the previous slide, 20,000 and 15,000, total $35,000 for 500 units of tables. Whereas for chairs, the raw material cost is 30,000 and 20,000 total 50,000 uh, prime cost for 2000 units. Fine. So if I try to calculate the per unit prime cost for each of them. So for tables, it will be 35,000 divided by 500. So $70 per table. Whereas for chairs, if I try to calculate the prime cost per unit, 50,000 divided by 2,000, $25 per chair, which is fine. So till now it's okay. So we have arrived at the unit cost of each product, only the prime cost, not the total cost. Then the business estimates that it will spend total of 60,000 on overheads. These might include your indirect material, indirect labor, indirect other expenses. Now the problem here is when the business was producing just a single product, it was okay to divide the entire indirect cost by the total units being produced because it's just one type of product. But here, the $60,000 cannot be derived, uh, you know, directly divided by the total output. Why? Because the nature of indirect cost is such that you cannot link it to individual products so easily. That's why they are called indirect cost. Direct cost means cost which can be directly linked to the products, while indirect cost cannot be directly, you know, attached or allocated to any particular product. And some of you might say that. Why can't we divide the 60,000, which is the total cost, divided by the total output of 2,500 units, meaning 500 chairs, sorry, 500 tables and 2,000 chairs. So 2,500. Can we do this? Is it logical? Think about it. Each unit of table and each unit of chair, will they have the same expenses being incurred for them? If you think about Let's say you're trying to manufacture only tables and only chairs. Will you incur the same uh, per unit overhead for each product? No, that's not right. So you cannot use just a blanket rate of overheads where you divide the total overheads by the total units of all the products being produced. Some products might need very few overheads or a very lower amount of overheads while some products, the, the cost of overheads or the amount of overheads will be very high. So directly you cannot divide. So I here I do get the total production cost for A and B together. I mean, sorry, for tables and chairs together, which is 145,000, the 85,000 prime cost plus 60,000 indirect cost or overheads. But I'm not able to calculate the per unit cost of table and chair. This is where concepts of absorption costing will be useful. So next we need to study how do we allocate overheads? How do we apportion the overheads and finally how do we absorb the overheads over the products. So all these details we will be studying in the next video.
Thank you for being there and make sure you continue watching the series. When you finish the series on costing, when you finish all the videos in costing, after the last video only you'll be able to develop a good perspective of how costing works or how the concepts of costing works. Maybe after watching one or two or three videos, you there will be a lot of confusion. Why are things being done in a certain way? But make sure you watch the entire playlist and entire series and I'm sure concepts will be very clear after that.